What the right against self-incrimination does is it protects you from being forced to testify against yourself, to be a witness against yourself in a case. If the idea of the right against self-incrimination is that we can't force you to respond to questions, and I put you into an fMRI, and you're utterly silent, you don't say a word, but I ask you a series of questions like, <laughs> yeah. did you do this, yeah. and I'm measuring your response from your brain, yeah. You know, that feels a lot like testifying. And so it seems like this whole area of constitutional law is going to have to be rethought. We're not in the, at, at the point where we can really compel yeah. a person's brain to cooperate with, uh, you know, police yet. But you could imagine a scenario where it would happen. So it wouldn't be putting the person into the fMRI and immobilizing them. It would be the point at which this technology could be something more remote, right? So rather than um, you being aware of me using it, I could be reading the blood oxygenation levels in your brain or using something like uh, functional near-infrared technology to be reading your responses as I'm asking you a series of questions. And then the question is, does the Constitution do anything to safeguard you against that? Yeah, I mean, that, the more you describe these techniques getting better, right. more efficient, more reliable, the more I wonder how how different is that from Big Brother looking into our into our heads? Well, a lot of people are worried about that because if you think that technology could get to the point where it's used on the unsuspecting person yeah. and the you know kind of enclave of private life, this what's going on in my head that I've always thought, well, you know, I can think it as long as I don't say it, I'm safe. Yeah. That just might not be true anymore, but it's a long ways off.